In the new Alpha timeline, Carcat passes his title of team leader onto Vriska, and Vriska helps to make sure everything goes well on the meteor. She fixes Rose's drinking problem and prevents Gamzy and Terezi from getting together. She also takes place of Gamzy in the Alpha Kid session, prototyping Jane's sprite with Tabros to make up for killing him, and ensuring the creation of Arqueous sprite by prototyping Dirk's sprite with Equius, because she finds his existence both hilarious and fulfilling. Skipping ahead, Vriska is waiting on the Victory platform for John and Roxy to arrive. Alongside her are Terezi, Gamzy, Karkat, Dave, Rose, Kanaya, Jake, Tavro Sprite, Jade, Jane, and Arquia Sprite. Jade and Jane are asleep so that they can't be mind-controlled, and Arquia Sprite is deactivating Jane's cigar top. Gamzy is locked in a fridge. As they wait, Terezi convinces Vriska to use the two remaining blank kernels to revive Nepeta and Feferi in the event that the kernels don't have to be used to revive anyone else. She doesn't wish to revive Aridin, because he really doesn't deserve it, and she doesn't wish to revive Solix because he seems genuinely happy in the furthest ring with Aradia. John and Roxy show up, and Roxy has a cheerful sort of reunion with Rose, with Kanaya joining in. John asks Terezi why he had to do all the weird stuff dragon shit, to which Terezi replies that her alternate self was almost certainly fucking with him. Friska thanks John for giving her the important punch in the face she needed to quite literally knock some sense into her, and Rose thanks him for facilitating her sort of reunion with Roxy. John also greets Jake, and the two promise to follow up on Jake's offer to spar from the letter he sent John three years prior, from John's point of view at least, at the end of Act 4. John also settles down to mingle with Dave and Carcat, where they talk about Carcat's old black rom crush on John, troll romance in general, and Terezi and John's possible black rom crush, and John's possible crush with Roxy. Briska proves herself to still be just as big of an ass when she completely smashes Jake's self-confidence and calls all pages useless. Tavros attempts to stand up for Jake, but ultimately fails. Rose Sprite shows up alongside Jasper Sprite, as the feline Sprite apparently decided to resurrect the Doom Timeline's Rose with the other, now-dead Roxy's unprototyped kernel. Rose, understandably, has a mental breakdown. Briska calls everyone to order to discuss strategy, bringing everyone up to speed on the dangers they're facing. Jean will run healing duty. The Condess will be dealt with by John, Rose, and Roxy. Beck Noir will be dealt with by PM, as well as by Jade if she happens to wake up and not be mind-controlled. Lord Jack will be dealt with by Terezi, Dave, and Dirk. Spade Slick and his minions will be dealt with by Jake. Kanaya and Karkat have to go speak with Echidna about letting the Genesis Frog free from the Forge on Jade's planet, where it fell at the end of Act 5, Act 2. Arqueous Sprite mentions wanting to do something completely unexpected that will turn the tide for all of existence, referring to when he will eventually help defeat Caliborn and become part of Lord English. Tavro Sprite wants to help too, but Friska says she'll assign his duty later. With all the tactics planned out and roles assigned, Friska tells everyone to make sure Suburb enters the endgame so that Skaya can be ready for the Genesis Frog. She also gives John the planet Earth from the Alpha Kids universe, which she ganked in place of Jade. Apparently, John's dad's wallet was meant to be given to Terezi so they could gank the planet easily, but Briska found a way to reverse engineer the wallet and upgrade her own Silidex with it, so in the end it didn't really matter. She says that later, they should use the Earth for the new home planet in the universe they create. Briska uses Roxy to purify a rifle to zap Dirk into the session sooner, and then hops into the furthest ring to go rekindle the plan to kill Lord English and stop her Game Over Timeline ghost from being such a fucking loser. The dream bubble that Calliope, Jane, and Jade are in fades into another one, one depicting Echidna's lair. Jane wakes up, courtesy of Arqueous Sprite having successfully reprogrammed her tiara top. When Jane mentions meeting Calliope in a dream bubble, Roxy makes plans to give Calliope the Ring of Life soon, to which Rose Sprite and Rose both offer to help. Jasper Sprite, excited by all of the bonding, hugs the nearest person, the Tier 1 prototyped Rose Sprite. The two merge into Jasper Sprite Squared. Just after Jane appears, Jade and Calliope meet with the alternate god tier Calliope. Calliope has a private chat with this alternate version of herself, and the two converse. God tier Calliope has been waiting for this Calliope to arrive as a signal, which would tell her when it was time to leave and fulfill her promise to Echidna by ensuring Lord English's defeat. Calliope, however, has no such destiny. The God tier Calliope gives her a simple word of advice. Live. God tier Calliope and Jade fly away together. Roxy appears in the dream bubble and brings Calliope back with the Ring of Life. Echidna has promised to release the frog when the two rings are thrown into the forge, and has tasked Kanaya and Karkat with taking care of the new universe through their motherhood and leadership, which reflect their aspects of space and blood. After their meeting with Echidna, Karkat and Kanaya have a talk. Karkat recounts meeting with his denizen in the troll session. His denizen was so small and weak that Karkat easily killed it out of rage. Karkat feels like he was given a weak training denizen and wishes he could do something big and important. Kanaya tries to convince him that that's why he's the leader, but he denies it. There was another condition to Echidna's deal, however. Karkat has to be kept safe. In an attempt to do just that, Kanaya knocks Karkat out and leaves him safe in the cave on Lofof. Roxy and Calliope return to the victory platform to find Jaspros enthusiastically talking non-stop. Jaspros claims her new form of existence as a sprite to the second power has given her a highly focused understanding of her aspect, no filter, and keener instincts. She even appears to remember the deaths of every iteration of Rose and Jasper across every timeline. Jaspros explains to Jane 
what her role will be in the upcoming battle, and then teleports away to Echidna's lair, where she expresses her love for Kanaya before teleporting away again. Jasperos attempts to butt into Dave and Dirk's hangout on Lotak, but the two just awkwardly stare at her until she zaps away to Lomax. There, Jasperos notices Jake's unprototyped Colonel Sprite and teleports back to the Victory Platform, informing everyone of her plan to revive one of the remaining trolls, being coy about which she's going to revive. Jasperos teleports away, and Terezi guesses correctly that she's probably just going to bring Nepeta back. Dirk and Dave sit around on Lotak, awkwardly waiting for the battle to start. After several failed attempts to talk, Dirk finally asks what Dave's problem with him is. Eventually, Dave finally caves, and talks about the abusive and traumatizing childhood he had under Bro. Dave apologizes for projecting the deeds of his alternate Dirk onto him, but Dirk says there's no need for an apology, and the blame is warranted. The two proceed to have a feelings jam. Dirk talks about why he idolized his timeline's Dave, and the two hug it out. Everyone on the Victory platform gets to know Calliope a bit better, and Calliope helps catch Jane up on what happened in the furthest ring after she woke up. Roxy and Calliope then have a private conversation. Calliope thanks Roxy for pulling her aside, claiming that she's still getting used to the concept of in-person socialization, and was overwhelmed with the number of people. The two reflect on their experiences, both good and bad, and Roxy explains her personal philosophy that every person and event in the timeline is equally important, making it a point to say that the Gautier Calliope and this Calliope are no more important than each other, and that both will do and have done something significant. Meanwhile, Rose is having identity issues thanks to Jasbros, but John assures her, similar to Roxy's speech, that all versions of people are equally important. The conversation shifts to talking about Rose and Kanaya, and John remarks the two make a nice couple. Terezi and John blatantly flirt with each other in a weird black rom sort of way. Aside from the quick feelings jam, Roxy also brought Calliope aside for another reason. With the Muse of Space present, she hopes to be able to combine their powers to create the Matriorb. The two sit across from each other and focus all of their energy into the effort, and successfully create the Matriorb. Jasperos appears and spirits Jane away to Lokha, where she meets both Nana sprites, one of which followed John from the Game Over timeline. Nana explains that the three of them are on healing duty, and Jasperos will cart them around to each fight with her teleporting powers. Roxy drops off Calliope with WV and the Sleeping Jade on Lofoth. She then flies to Kanaya, gifting her with a Matriorb. Kanaya starts crying, and the two talk about Kanaya's responsibility in reviving trolls in the New World. Kanaya is hesitant to enter the battle with the Condess because of this responsibility, but Roxy convinces her to go anyways, promising that her, John, and Rose won't let anything happen to her. The two fly away from Lofoth. While Tavros, Sprite, and Jake are having a conversation on Lomax, Jasperos teleports in, making Tavros's cat allergy act up. She feeds him a button, claiming it to be an allergy-curing pill, and the placebo comps down his allergies. However, when she revives Nepeta with Jake's Colonel Sprite, Tavros's fake cure wears off and gets sick again. Friska calls Jake and gets him to summon G-Cat, and then convinces Tavros Sprite to pick the cat up as a critical part of the mission. Tavros Sprite is prototyped the G-Cat, making Tavros violently allergic to himself before Visca puts him to sleep. With G-Cat out of the way, the Condess will have significantly less of an upper hand. Jasper starts having a tea party with Nepeta Sprite in an attempt to date Nepeta. Dave Sprite, who was wandering Loas when John zapped the planet into blank space, arrives in the middle of this, and introduces himself to Nepeta Sprite with a handshake. The two sprites are prototyped together, creating Dave Peta Sprite squared, much to the dismay of Jasper's. Dave Peta introduces themselves to Jasper's. The two have a feelings jam, working through some of the hurt feelings and issues Jasper's has been having. They consider continuing their date when Dave Peta comes upon the realization that Lord English might be vulnerable to him, though he can't quite explain why he feels this way. Dave Peta says he's going to go face Lord English, but not before catching up with a couple of old friends. Dave and Dirk swap stories about their upbringings and timelines. Dave also starts a discussion about his sexuality, wondering how Dirk told his friends that he was gay. The view cuts away to Arqueous Sprite. Just as the eight planets start releasing their grist hordes into Skya to fertilize it for the Genesis Frog, Dave Peta arrives, reunites with Arqueous Sprite, and the two hug it out. Jade and God Deer Calliope are flying through the furthest ring towards the green sun. Calliope explains how in the furthest ring, the aspects such as time and space are practically indistinguishable from each other, and the cracks in the furthest ring are making the aspects more separate. Here, the passage of time and movement through space are pretty much indistinguishable from each other. Calliope refuses to allow Jade to wake up until their destination is reached, to allow time to flow correctly. She also remarks on the aspect of space and a destiny of collapsing in on oneself. Jade is perturbed, but continues to follow. Ghost Friska and Ghost Mina are hanging out in the furthest ring, and Mina seems to be dissociating, seeing no point in doing anything, and citing the dull, repetitive, dreamlike monotony of the afterlife. When Ghost Friska realizes something's wrong, she unsuccessfully tries to get Mina to talk about it. It's at this point that the living Friska shows up and ganks the house juju chest. Friska then demeans her alternate self to the point of tears. When Ghost Friska tries to leave, Mina doesn't seem to want to follow. She's bored. She's afraid that if she keeps being with Ghost Friska, she'll eventually hurt her, and she wants to be important again. And the living Friska gives her a chance to do that. Long story short, they're breaking up. Mina and Friska's ghost both cry, and Mina leaves to join the living Friska's cause. Mina brings Friska up to speed on everything, but the two are unable to find out how to create another ghost army. It's at this point that they come across a huge army of ghosts, led by the pre-retcon Tavros, much to the shock of Friska. 
Tavros explains that he simply used friendship and kindness to gather the army, and Friska has a breakdown while Tavros gloats and starts doing a victory dance. Pulling herself back together, she acknowledges Tavros' accomplishment, and Tavros grants Mina leadership over the army. Roxy and Kanaya arrive at the victory platform, and everyone starts heading to their designated places to await the upcoming final showdown. Terezi and John participate in a bit of black rom flirting before Terezi blasts off to join Dirk and Dave. As she flies, she attempts to contact a non-responsive Vriska. Terezi pours her heart out, saying that despite being glad for John saving Vriska, she still feels empty inside, and her moral allegiance with Vriska is only covering up her insecurities. Terezi wishes she could remember what happened in the pre-con timeline, since she feels useless compared to the version of herself that orchestrated the retcon in the first place. She signs off with the comment that maybe she wouldn't have to feel like this if she could just remember.
Spade Slick drops off the felt on Lomax with Jake, before recognizing Lord Jack as a version of Lord English and blasting off to fight him, still intent on getting revenge for the casino that the felt burnt down prior to the start of Intermission 1, which, by the way, didn't stop being a thing. John, Roxy, Rose, Kanaya, and Jane are waiting for the Condest to arrive on Durst, while Jane's father looks on in proud fatherly admiration. Carcat wakes up in the furthest ring, joining the Ghost Army to fight Lord English. The army arrives at their destination, where Vriska waits with a juju chest, Hussey watching nearby in secret. Lord English arrives in his Cairo overcoat. Caliborn makes his way to his denizen Yaldabaoth's lair, crowbar in hand. Jade and Calliope reach the Green Sun, and Calliope leaves Jade with the advice to not wake up during the battle, as her powers could be a liability. Dave Petta shows up, confusing Jade until Dave Petta explains his origins, as well as his merging with Nepeta's Sprite. He asks where Lord English is, and takes Jade's advice to follow the ghosts in the cracks. When Jade expresses her worry that her aspect of space distances her to be lonely and empty, Dave Petta denies it. Dave Petta posits that even if she can't remember every timeline, all of it still happened to her, the greater Jade, as it were. Even if this Jade was deprived of her experiences on the meteor, for example, it still happened to a more ultimate version of Jade, the overarching concept of her that Dave Petta, as a sprite squared, has access to about themselves. After Jade calms down a little, she asks if Dave Petta can wake her up, to which Dave Petta says yes. Dave Petta unexpectedly kisses Jade goodbye, and then wakes her up with a chest claw stab. Dirk, Dave, and Terezi are getting ready to battle when Jade zaps in. She thanks him for tying the note to her finger, and says she's going to fly off to deal with the two ring-wearing Carapacians. Despite Dave's protests that she should stay asleep so that the Condest doesn't mind control her, Jade just tells Dave that he's a good kisser, even with cat lips, and teleports away, leaving a confused Dave. Slick and Jack arrive, and Dirk offers one final lightning round question. Dave asks why they're so awesome, to which Dirk comments that that's the best fucking question anybody has ever asked. Tired after three years of ceaseless chasing through the furthest ring, Beck Noir finally stops in the ruined Prospect and PM and Beck Noir draw their swords, intent on fighting. The stage for the final showdown has been set. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this summary, be sure to leave a like. If you want to be informed of remaining summaries when they're uploaded, hit the subscribe button. I also have a few other videos in the works, so be on the lookout for those too. If you want to support me, you can donate to my Patreon or GoFundMe. And with that out of the way, I will see you in the next video.